welcome students myself mr ahiro v in this video we are going to learn two types of oscilloscope probes and these are 1 raised to 1 and 10 raised to 1 or the attenuator probe objective to learn the construction and characteristics of 1 raised to 1 and 10 raised to 1 that is the attenuator oscilloscope probes outcome the students will be able to make use of appropriate oscilloscope probe for the given frequency dependent measurement oscilloscope probes we know that oscilloscope is a versatile instrument which is used for measurement monitoring and analysis of different input signals or waveforms the input signals to an oscilloscope are usually connected via the coaxial cables which are having the probe at one end that connector is also termed as a bnc this type of probe is usually referred as 1 raised to 1 probe as shown in the diagram the probe having the connector at one end and at other end it consists of two agitator clips or a sharp pointer and a ground agitator clip if you will go for the diagram which will show the equivalent circuit of the source that is the signal under measurement represented by a series combination of the signals amplitude or voltage source that is vs in series with the source resistance rs the probe which is a coaxial cable and it will have a certain coaxial cable capacitance represented by c c c and at the right side the oscilloscope input the oscilloscope is a shunt connected instrument and hence the input impedance or resistance can be represented by r i in parallel with the capacitance ci usually most of the oscilloscopes are having the resistance of 1 mega ohm in parallel with the capacitance 25 picofarad at the frequencies where the reactance of c c c plus c i is much greater than the source resistance rs and the input resistance of oscilloscope ri the capacitances have a negligible effect and the oscilloscope terminal voltage vi is given by vi is equal to vs into ri upon rs plus ri the capacitive reactance decreases gradually as we know xc that is the capacitive reactance is equal to 1 upon 2 pi f into c where f will be the signal frequency with the increase in frequency and thus attenuates the input signal hence the oscilloscope probe which is a simple coaxial cable of approximately 1 meter of length will attenuate the signal at certain high frequency hence for most of the applications where the signal frequency may go beyond 
a certain frequency where the 1 raised to 1 probe may attenuate the signal another type of probe which is oscilloscope probe 10 raised to 1 or in generally called as attenuator probe is used. The attenuator probe attenuates the input signal normally by a factor of 10. Also, they offer high impedance than 1 raised to 1 probes. This minimizes the loading effect on the circuit or the signal under test. The picture shows the 10 raised to 1 or attenuator probe. While using the attenuator probe, the gain of the internal vertical amplifier should be increased by a factor of 10 because as the name indicates 10 raised to 1 it means when for example when we are going to give 10 hold at the input then it will be only one hold at the output side at the end of measurement the quantity should be multiplied by 10 to get the actual value of the input signal. The circuit representing the source side, the probe and the oscilloscope input side. The source side will remain same that is a series combination of VS and RS. The oscilloscope input side is also the same that is input resistance Ri parallel with the capacitance Ci. Now the probe circuit has two changes. A 9 mega ohm resistor is included in series with the input terminal that is at the probe tip and an adjustable capacitor that is C1 which is also called as a trimming capacitor connected in parallel. The figure shows the equivalent circuit of 10 raised to 1 probe. C2 is the sum of the oscilloscope input capacitance and Ci as well as the coaxial cable capacitance CCC that is C2 is equal to coaxial cable capacitance plus input capacitance of the oscilloscope. At low and medium frequencies the capacitive impedances are too large to be effective and the oscilloscope input voltage is Vi is equal to Vs into Ri upon R1 plus Rs plus Ri because the capacitances are having greater impedances. When Rs is very small than the value of R1 then Vi is nearly equal to Vs into Ri upon R1 plus Ri. With R1 is equal to 9 mega ohms and Ri is equal to 1 mega ohm, the value of voltage at the input terminal of oscilloscope becomes Vi is equal to Vs upon 10. This equation shows that whatever voltage that we are going to measure or it is under test that voltage will be getting divided by a factor of 10. This is because of the attenuator probe circuit consisting of a 9 mega ohm resistor in parallel with a capacitor C1. The attenuation of the signal 
due to only capacitors is calculated from Vi is equal to Vs into Xc2 upon Xc1 plus Xc2. Here we are only considering the capacitance acting alone. In the equation Xc1 is the capacitive impedance and the Xc2 will be the capacitive impedance of the capacitor C2. This is equal to Bs into 1 upon omega C2 upon 1 upon omega C1 plus 1 upon omega C2. If you will solve, then we can write Vi is equal to Bs into C1 upon C2 plus C1. Remember, C2 is equal to Ci plus CCC. When the resistive and capacitive network attenuates the signal in the same proportion, which is the requirement, the voltage across Ri and C2 will be equal and hence we can write Ri upon R1 plus Ri is equal to C1 upon C2 plus C1. Solving for the required value of C1, C1 will be equal to C2 into Ri upon R1. With the same values of R1 and Ri, that is 9 mega ohms and 1 mega ohms, we will get C1 is equal to C2 upon 9. That means at the probe tip, we have to add two components R1, that is a 9 mega ohm resistor, and a trimming capacitor or adjustable capacitor C1 which should have the value of C2 upon 9. In total, these two components will provide and form the attenuator probe or 10 raised to 1 probe. Now, we know how to test a probe with the oscilloscope. Different waveforms are getting displayed at the time of probe testing. A perfect square wave will be obtained when R1C1 is equal to R2C2. A perfect square wave represents a correctly compensated attenuator probe. Sometimes we are getting the spikes above the actual signal voltage under test and for which R1C1 is greater than R2C2. When we are getting such waveform, it means it is a overcompensated probe. The third one here, instead of getting a sharp change, the signal voltage will change slowly up to the larger or positive peak and in that case R1C1 is less than R2C2. This waveform represents an undercompensated probe. So when we have to test the probe and use it, we must get a correctly compensated probe. That is at the time of probe testing, we should have a perfect square wave. And if we are getting the waveforms like shown here, as in figure second and third, then we have to adjust the trimming capacitor till we will get a perfect square wave. You may refer the two books. First one by A.K. Sohani. Electrical and Electronics Measurements and Instruments 
and the second one by David Bell, Electronic Instrumentation and Measurements. Thank you.